Welcome back to Frozen Education. This is Zet. Today I'm going to be talking about NBRV. I'm going to be doing technical analysis. I'm going to be doing a little bit of financials, looking through the presentation and news and any kind of uh, potential PRs coming through. Make sure you share, subscribe, and like this video to help this channel grow. Without further ado, so we're going to dive right into it. So we're going to do one month, one day first. You get to see that MACD here has confirmed a reversal around the 16th, and this was caused by news I'll go through in a bit. And you get to see that that kind of reversal is stable. Even with less volume than the day before, it still sees quite a good growth. In terms of momentum, it's still gaining on positive momentum, although the rate of momentum increase is still decreasing here. Towards the million percent R, the stock is still around very much neutral, but going in around the overbought situation here. Average directional index does not support uh, a trend right now, but it's hinting for a creation of a trend sometime upcoming soon. The 10 SMA and the 30 AMA are very close to each other, 0.72 and 0.74, although the 10 SMA is still below the 30 AMA, so that's a red sign, but how close they are is a positive sign. The stock price, uh, the stock is above the 50 SMA, which is a good sign, and it almost touched the 200 SMA. Once it does touch the 200 SMA, that might be a signal for breakout. Going in towards the one hour intervals here, you get to see the MACD has been quite negative, especially after that gap up, gap up. It has seen quite a bit of a negative run, and then it did see a bit of a jump. So it's a little bit of mixed sideways trading here, uh, mainly, mainly moving with news. Now, the stock price is currently sitting in uh, under the VWAP, or barely touching the VWAP, above the 50 SMA, 200 SMA, which is a good sign. Although the 10 SMA and the 30 MA here are also very close. They're actually touching. 10 SMA and 30 MA are touching a 0.91, which is a signal for potential breakout. The William percent R will ignore the last basic hour, basic hour. It's more around, I would say, oversold for during the day hours. The average directional index is sitting around 28.79, which is just a beginning of a trend. Uh, nothing here else to see. Uh, we're going to go quickly towards uh, the moving averages, and you get to see the stock is above that moving average at the moment. Moving average... Here highlighted in CN. Uh, the drawback is that it does, can drop somewhere between 0.65 and 0.78 only based on the moving average. So now going on towards trying to find the supports and resistances. We're going to do quickly Fibonacci retracements here. And you get to see that the current Fibonacci retracement support is sitting at 0.86. Uh, we can see another one around 0.88 that happened around uh, on Friday in the aftermarket and on the 15th. Current resistance seems to be somewhere around 0.94, uh, confirmed by the Fibonacci retracements, and the uh, next support would be somewhere around 0.81, followed by 0.79 by uh, 0.79 to 0.8 by the Fibonacci retracements, and followed by that around 0.74. Now going on towards any patterns, I don't see any significant patterns here that we're looking at. It might. I mean, there is a double top here, which is a bearish, but it could also show a little bit of a double bottom. So nothing very significant here. Now going on towards news and diving in towards the company's profile. So in terms of the company itself, we're going to do insider information at the very last. One thing that I've actually, re I have held this one for a while ago, and I received as well one of their proxy votes. Uh, so... Basically, they uh, in the proxy vote that I believe we have to vote by end of July or something. I have to double check my proxy vote. But uh, you get to elect the board of directors, which is nothing here. It's going to be very much affected. Ratify the non-binding advisory vote. Nothing here important. The most important thing to me is to approve a reverse stock split. Well, with the way that it's actually going, you might actually reach the $1 before I believe their, their deadline was November. So... They have a bit of time to reach above there, although I wouldn't very much consider holding it all the way until then, just to be careful. Uh, if that reverse split comes in as positive, that might come in a little bit of drawdown, but from what I see in sentiment is a lot of investors don't want that. But uh, we all know that it's not only stock tweets and Twitter that are voting. Uh, not only retail investors are voting, also institutions and whatnot. Going in towards the next one here, this is the exact same thing, a proxy vote, so not a lot of information there. Uh, the brief interpreter, uh, they entered an exclusive agreement to promote and distribute the uh, SIV EXTRO in the States, and that happened on the 15th, and that got a jump out of it, so that is actually good news. I've, I've seen a lot of uh, different presentations for this company, 
especially these one of the two products that they have uh, that are very promising. Going on towards here as well, not a lot of information into this one exactly, but it's the same. It's the same basic information as one this one here. Uh, they have wait, hold on. No, this was the actual agreement between just exhibits. Yep, and this one here is they received the Health of Canada approval for treatment community acquired. Uh, pneumonia so that happened on the 16th it got the price to jump as well so that was one of the things pending i remember from the prs back in june uh of course aside from their fda that has to still visit their location with their manufacturers so i know that got it to be negative and that why that's the reason why the price kind of plummeted afterwards uh they have a few things in the pipelines um so they got one two three four five different programs all above preclinical, at least in phase one and above. One of them is actually approved and everything. So uh, in terms of the indications, but they still got a lot of PR here to grow. In terms of the events and presentations, one thing to highlight here, but I think that that kind of trend is going to break, especially since they have an approval now for, for uh, one of the medicines. I remember them in the conference call mentioning that they did have a little bit of hard time with COVID-19 and selling to hospitals, especially since they're over capacity and... Hospitals have different kind of rules right now in terms of you can't have your salesmen just go in and uh, sell it off the product. They do have from 2019, from 2018, uh, a smaller net loss. So that's good news, even though it kind of ramped up in the last few years. But that's after they had some of the products kind of kick in in terms of sales. The 2020 to 2019, there is a little bit of extra loss, although that's kind of impressive uh, as from what I've heard from their conference is that a lot of their operations, sales operation, uh, kind of got affected highly. Uh, going in now through their PowerPoint, uh, I'm just going to go here quickly, try to identify anything that is kind of significant. They have uh, active pursue business developments and licensing opportunities with a focus on community-based products, uh, obtain approvals in Europe and Canada. So, and prepare to launch off Contipo. So, there's a lot of PR that can come there. I know that FDA travel restrictions for May impact Contipo's June 2019 PDUFA date. And I know that kind of uh, got delayed. So, still kind of expecting that to come sometime soon when they reapply for it. That could be actually a positive PR as well. Uh, what else? Positive coverage. Uh, the, co the impact 700,000 people for their people. Uh, there it's a one trillion globally industry global industry by 2050 uh something i like to see here uh their board of directors seems to be a bit of decorated backgrounds some big names here as well uh what else we're looking at here nothing the trying to scan everything here as we speak just to make sure i don't miss anything and bunch of um kind of technical information that we're not going to go through here uh, i don't have a medical background myself but here we go q1 2020 financial highlights they had nabriva's revenue of around 800,000, 150,000. the product sale um paid down 30 mm off 335 mm loans balance with hercules in quarter one they have cash for around 27.6 mm as of march 1st uh, what else we're looking at here? So they have enough cash. I don't suspect that they have another offering sometime soon with the amount of cash they have. Although I don't, not hundred percent sure in terms of their current spending. Now I know one thing in terms of the video, in terms of the conference, that they are also selling for uh, long-term housings and uh, uh, nursing homes. So for in terms of their medicines, so that could be positive coming in back now. Um, and so there's nothing much here else to see. What do you think about this stock? Make sure you mention it down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and you have a wonderful day.